In this lesson, we're going to take a look at uh, summation notation. And the sum of a series can be abbreviated using the summation symbol. This is the summation symbol here. It's the Greek letter sigma, which is the counterpart to our capital S. Now, a series is just the sum of a bunch of terms, or the difference. If we wrote 1, 8, 27, comma up to 1,000, then that would be a sequence. When you add together all the terms or subtract them, then that's called a series. Now notice what these numbers are. They're the perfect cubes. 1 is 1 cubed, 8 is 2 cubed, 27 is 3 cubed, and 1,000 is 10 cubed. So it's all the perfect cubes from 1 cubed to 10 cubed. Now when we write this as a summation, this is what it looks like. This k here is called the index of summation, and you can think of it as a counter. It counts from 1 up to 10. The 1 and the 10 are called the limits of summation. They tell you what to start at and what to end at. And the k cubed here is a general term, or it's called the sum end. So if I were given this summation and asked to write out the series, I would start with 1. I'd put 1 in place of k. So 1 cubed is the first term, which gives us 1. The next number after 1 is 2 when you count, so 2 cubed is the next term. And then 3 comes after 2, so 3 cubed is the next term. And then the, the upper limit of the summation is 10, so the last number where you're supposed to put in place a k would be 10, and uh, 10 cubed is, gives you the 1,000, the last term. So that's how you would take a summation and write out the series that it represents, which is what we're going to do in the example on the second page. It says write each summation in expanded form, and that means to write the series that each summation represents. So the first one here, the sum end, is 7k plus 3, and we're going to start with k equals 1 and go up to 4. So if we put 1 in place of k, 7 times 1 plus 3 would be the first term. Then putting 2 in place of k, 7 times 2 plus 3 is the next one. Up to in the last one we put 4 in place of k. So 7, 7 times 4 plus 3 is the last term. Uh, 7 plus 3 is 10, 14 plus 3 is 17, 21 plus 3 is 24, and 28 plus 3 is 31. So that's, that's the series that that represents. The next one the sum end is 5 times 2 to the m. Now we start with m equals 3 here, not 1. You're not always starting with 1. So that's why the first term is 5 times 2 to the third, putting 3 in place of m. And then 4, 5 times 2 to the fourth. The last number we put in place of uh, m is the 8. So 5 times 2 to the eighth is the last term. Now there's only six terms here. So we'll, we can write them all out. You don't have to write the first couple and then dot, 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 the last one when there's only a few. So 2 cubed is 8 times 5 is 40, 2 to the 4th is 16, times 5 is 80, etc. And then 2 to the 8th times 5 gives you 1280. So that's the series that this represents. Some common summation properties. If you have the summation from 1 to n, notice the counter here is the variable j. This says k times a sub j. So the k has absolutely nothing to do with j. They're different variables whatsoever. In fact, the k here is a constant. And that's equal to, now what this says is that the, any constant can be factored out of a summation. So this is the factor term. The, con, the k has been factored out of the summation. So it's k times the summation. Now, if we were to write out the series just to show you that that's true, then if I put 1 in place of j, then k times a sub 1, uh, the one's a subscript, is the first term. If we put 2 in place of j, then we get k times a sub 2. k times a sub 3 is the next one, up to, and if we put n in place of j, k times a sub 1, is, sub n, sorry, is the last term. Now all these have a common factor of k, so the k can be factored out. And then we, when we factor it out, what's in the big factor in the brackets is a sub 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 up to a n. And this is the summation, right here, of the general terms a sub j from 1 to n. So this can be replaced with, see this is this k, and this can be replaced with the summation of the a sub j terms from 1 to n. So that's just demonstrating that that is true. Now if you have a summation of 
a term or expression that has two or more parts, you can break that down to the summation of all the different parts. If there's a subtraction sign here instead, same idea, it would be the uh, uh, a sub k sum minus the b sub k sum. And just to show you that this is true, just to demonstrate that it is, if we were to write out the series, if we put 1 in place of k, we get a1 plus b1. And then we put 2, so we get plus a2 plus b2, and then a3 plus b3, up to. And if we put n in place of uh, k, we get an plus bn. Now, rewriting it with all the a's first, and then the b's next, b1, b2, b3, plus up to b sub n, this and this are these two summations. This is the sum of the a sub k terms from 1 to n, and this is the sum of the b sub k terms from 1 to n. So that just demonstrates how that can be written as the this single summation can be written as the sum of these two individual summations. Some common numerous or numerical properties of summation notation now notice here that the sum end, the term k, is completely independent of what j is. So that just means that no matter what j is, every term is a k. So if we write this out, if uh, j is 1, then the first term is k. If j is 2, the second term is still k, because again, k and j are different. Um, so this just means that every term is a k. Uh, if k is 3, then, sorry, if j is 3, then the third term's a k. If uh, j is n, then the last term is still a k. So these are all k's, and there's n of them because we count them from 1 to n. So that's why this would simplify to kn, because there's n k's. Now, the, um, three, um, the next three things are formulas for the sum of the first n natural numbers, and then the first n squared, etc., and then the n cubed. So this is, now notice that this summation looks an awful lot like this one, except here it says the index is k. k goes from 1 to n, and notice that k is the same as this k. Here, j started at 1, and the sum n was k. So different variables, different letters. Here they're the same. So if k is 1, then the first term is 1. If k next is 2, but 2 in place of k, then the second term is 2. If k is 3, the next term is 3, so, and then 4, etc., up to putting n in place of k, the last term is n. So this formula over here says if you take the first n natural numbers, 1 plus 2 plus 3, up to whatever n is, then the formula for that sum is just n times n plus 1 over 2. Now, we're not going to prove this. To prove this, you need a, a different type of proof that we're not going to study in this course, course called mathematical induction. Uh, but that's, I'm just, the, we're just giving you these formulas that if you see that kind of a series, you can find the sum of it. If you have the sum of the first n squared natural numbers, then this is a formula for the sum of that series. So uh, notice here it was k, here it's k squared. So 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared up to n squared is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. We're actually going to use this formula and the example in the next page. And if it's the n cubed, 1 cubed plus 2 cubed plus 3 cubed, etc., then the sum is just whatever n is, n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. So those are just formulas for the sum of each of these individual series. And the uh, last page here says evaluate each of the following. And so this, we're going to use that top property from the previous page. k goes from 1 to 9 and the sum end is 4. So that means that every single term is 4. And so using this property from the top of the previous page, k would be 4 and at the top here, n would be 9. And so this says that the sum is just k times n, or 4 times 9, which of course is 36. Now if you didn't remember that, then this series, if k is 1, then the first term is 4. Remember, 4 and the k are completely independent. If when k gets to be 2, the next term is 4. When k is 3, the next term is 4. They're all 4s because this is just a constant here. And go, k goes from 1 to 9, so there's 9 4s here, which of course is 36. Now from b here, we're going to use the, um, I guess it's the middle of the page in the 
last page, uh, the first uh, formula for the sum of a series on the previous page, we're going to use uh, the sum of, of k from uh, 1 to n, uh, and it's n times n plus 1 over 2. Now, n would be 100 here. So what we're actually calculating here, and so when we put 1 in place of n, and I'll show you that in a moment, 1 in place of n, sorry, 100 in place of n here, so it would be 100 times 100 plus 1, which of course is 101. So 100 times 101 over 2 works out to be 5,050. Now what we actually found that 5,050 is, is it's the sum of the first 100 numbers. Because this summation, if we write it out, uh, k is 1, the first term is 1, k is 2, the next term is 2. When k is 3, the next term is 3 up to 100. If k was 100, the last term is 100. So this formula here is used to calculate the sum of this series. Um, the n number was 100, so that's why we'd, we would use n as 100. So the sum of the numbers from 1 to 100 is 5050. That's what this is saying here. And that's the end of the lesson.